So glad to see everyone of you here. We're going we're gonna to be diving into Matthew chapter 4. And yes, we're going to be talking about fasting a little bit here today or a lot. Um, Wednesday, Wednesday, we're going to start our 21-day fast, 21 days. And we have three different types of fasts that you can do. One is a, 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 a fast until 6 o'clock in the afternoon. All day long until 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 6 o'clock, you could go ahead and eat a salad and a little soup. And that would be your fast. For some of us, um, a Daniel fast works out way better for you. And that means that you do eat all day and not all day long, but during the day. And, but you eat more like no meat, um, no bread. That's a Daniel fast. I don't, and then you say, what do I eat then? You, know, um, you could eat vegetables and nuts and what else? I don't even know. Chicken broth, that kind of stuff. Chick you could eat chicken broth. I don't know. You added that one to yours. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what kind of. He's going to have these big salads with all kinds of filet mignon on. I'm just cutting it to pieces. It'll be all right. <laughs> Does that a salad? Do you call that a salad? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, we're good, right? You know, but the idea is um, whatever fast you do, it's great. God acknowledges it. We're not trying to show off here. We're, we're just right now being focused. And we're saying God above everything. I want to draw close to you. And Bible promises if we draw close to God, he will draw close to us. And when he's close to us, you know what happens? We develop a greater relationship. And then this is really the greatest thing. We start hearing from God. And this is a time where we really want to hear from God. So we're going to start our fast Wednesday night. You can catch us online. Let's all start together. You're online. You're ready there. Uh, all of us here. Let's all get online together. We have another word on fasting. And we'll start our 21-day fast together. At the end of our 21-day <clears throat> fast, we're going to have a big, really, a revival in the church. And we're going to um, we're gonna have a Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday morning service. Um, I would love for you to put it on your calendar and just make that time a consecrated time to hear from God and go on a Jesus run. Some of you guys used to go on drug runs, go on a Jesus run for four days with Jesus. Well, let's do that for Jesus, okay? Uh, so let's look at Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, Matthew chapter 4. And we're just going to read chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. And if I titled this sermon, it, it, it would be very simple, Jesus fasted. And if Jesus fasted, I think it would be a good idea for us to fast. And he fasted for 40 days. We're going to read in this portion of scripture for 40 days and 40 nights. And this was what you call a full fast. It was a miracle fast. What I mean by that is he didn't eat food or drink water for 40 days. And this was before he ever did any ministry. What I mean by that is before he did any miracles, he ever did a, a real public speech or anything like that. He was preparing for 30 years. At 30 years old, he does a fast right before he's ready to start his ministry. Now, in this 40-day fast, there's something that happens that we're going to read in here that's really difficult. He's not only facing uh, a fast, starvation. Um, literally, his body has to be breaking down at this point with no water, no food. But he also had to face an onslaught of demonic attack. And for someone that's here, you might be saying, I don't even know if I believe in demonic attacks. What are you talking about? Well, if you don't even believe in it, I'll tell you this. Have you ever felt just totally overwhelmed with anxiety? Ever felt depressed? Ever felt like you couldn't put two thoughts together? Ever felt like you got to the point where your emotions were a wreck? You know, that really is a demonic attack. You feel totally overwhelmed and you can't sleep at night. And some of us have gone to the point where we feel like we're losing our minds. Well, Jesus came, uh, he, he faced, in this fast, he faced an onslaught of demonic warfare. But let's look at this verse, th these verses, and we'll just go right through them verse by verse. And it's in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. 
During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. And if you're ever fasting, anything that looks like food, you start thinking is food. It's like the old cartoons. Remember the old cartoons? I mean, when they're hungry and they start seeing a person and they start, that looks like a lamb chop to me. When, when you're fasting, it's like every commercial seems like a food commercial. When you're fasting, In-N-Out Burger smells really good. You, you could just, I, when I'm fasting, I, there was a sign that was on the 10 freeway and they had an In-N-Out Burger and they had like a little fake smoke coming out of it. I swore I smelled like there was really a burger there. My mouth started watering on the 10 freeway. He said, so the devil tells him, we'll go deeper into this, turn those stones. See those little stones? Don't they look like little, don't they look like little, little loaves of bread? Become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So Jesus here is just saying, the enemy was tempting him. The devil was saying, why don't you turn these, sto these stones into bread? Now, I want you to get this, that Jesus could have done that. that he could have relieved himself at this point. At 40 days, uh, they, what they were saying that at, when you're in a 40-day fast, and it, it's a supernatural miracle that he was able to do it. He was sustained by God to be able to do a fast like that. But for him to be hungry, that means he'd have to be at the last stages of starvation. Uh, the, usually if you're in a fast like this, uh, you would get finally to a point where you have no more hunger. But right before you're ready to die, your body gets its appetite right back. And it lets you know you have one more opportunity to save yourself. So at this point, he was at the point of literal starvation, at the point or the brink of his body shutting down. And now the devil comes to him with an idea to break his fast and submit to his suggestion. This is what I've learned about spiritual warfare. And the devil will come to you when you're at your weakest point, he'll have no mercy and he'll start bringing suggestions. So you have to be very careful that when you're in a weak place that you don't isolate yourself, surround yourself with other strong believers. So two, if two agree, if two agree, it shall be done. And, 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 and one will chase a thousand, but two will chase 10,000. So Jesus is facing this literally all alone. And this idea comes back and he's thinking, I'm sure I can do this. I could turn stones into bread. But if I do, I would actually be listening to the devil. And if I listen to him and I take action on his request, I would actually be obeying the devil. And it would even go further than that. I would be given the devil authority over my life and over my ministry. So this little suggestion is a strong point of negotiation. And so many times you're thinking this is no big deal and it looks so innocent because see a temptation only works when you can justify it. You finally get, get to the point where it's not so bad. A matter of fact, it's just food. We all need food. And I've been fasting already for 38 days. What does it matter that if I, I go two more days? Is that really going to make a difference? Oh, yes, it would make a difference. Because there was a commitment for 40 days. And 40 days is a number of completion. It wouldn't be done. Be careful that you're not agreeing with a devil that's trying to steal your purpose, your ministry, your joy, your freedom, and maybe your family. In a point of weakness. In a point. So Jesus is there and 
and the devil's there and Jesus does respond. And we'll go into that a little bit later. He goes, it says, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of what? God. What he was telling the devil here is, devil, I, I, I want you to get this. You're focused, you're trying to get me to focus on my physical body. And right now I'm feeding my spiritual soul. What he was saying that there's two parts of me that yes, need to be fed. My body needs to be fed to live, but my spirit needs to be fed to be strong. And that's why we're in the house of God. And that's why we're doing a fast this week to give, give some focus and attention to our spiritual life. Because not many of us will miss a physical meal. But how many spiritual meals have we missed? I wonder if we ate physically how we eat spiritually how healthy we would be. There's some people that only watch people eat. You cannot get full just watching people eat. You got to eat yourself. You got to get into the word yourself. You got to pray yourself. You can have a personal relationship with God yourself. Right? I cannot be healthy watching my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters eat. They could help me develop an appetite, but I got to eat myself. I am so glad that you're tuning in. I am so glad that you're here today. You know what you're saying? I'm getting, I'm sitting down for dinner and I, or breakfast or lunch and I'm getting my spiritual food right now to make me spiritually strong. And some of us right now, we're starving for this moment today to come to eat together with the Lord. So he was saying, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He goes, you don't live by just physical bread. You live by spiritual bread. And the spiritual bread is the eternal part of you. The physical stuff goes in and comes out. And there's going to be a day when that's all done. But the spiritual part will last forever. Let's keep going here. Then the devil. Someone say, then the devil. You know why it says then the devil? Because the devil doesn't give up. So he came with temptation number one. What was temptation number one? It was, it was the temptation of the lust of the flesh. The desires, the unhealthy and sensual desires of your body. And if you don't conquer those unhealthy and sensual desires of your body, those self-destructive desires, those selfish desires, this is what's going to happen. You will not make spiritual progress this year. Right? Because either you're going to be led by the Spirit or you're going to be led by your impulses. We're living in a world that people are led by their lust, they're led by their addictions, they're led by their anger, they're led by their unforgiveness, they're led, they're led by their emotions. But, and I would even say this, but we have even few Christians that are being led by the Spirit. So what we're doing in these 21 days, just like Jesus, Jesus was led by the Spirit. And this is what we're practicing. If we could develop this habit this year, this, this early in the year, the first 21 days, this year I will not be led by my anger. This year I will not be led by my past. This year I will not be led by my lust. This year I will not be led by the abuse I've gone through. This year is going to be different. This year I'm going to be led by the Spirit. And if you're led by the Spirit, 
Jesus was led by the Spirit. And when you're born again, Jesus gives you the Holy Spirit to guide you. So these first 21 days, we're going to start saying no to the ideas and the impulses that have made us confused, that have destroyed our lives and destroyed our purpose and got us off track. I got good news for you. If you've been off track, you could get on track today. Isn't it great? Someone said, get on track. So, so then after the devil comes up with this beautiful suggestion, <laughs> it was, I want you to, it was beautiful. Stones in the bread. Can't you smell the fa- fresh baked bread? Have you ever been in a bakery and they're, they have fa- fresh baked bread? Have you ever been in a bakery and they have fresh baked bread? bread and you're hungry? I don't think there's nothing more appealing to you than fresh baked bread and they're just cooked it and it's warm. I like going to Stater Brothers when they just cooked, I mean they just got the French bread out. It's soft and have you ever touched it to see if it's warm? Because if it's warm, you're like, oh, I wasn't planning to buy this bread. But this is, a, this is a fresh baked bread. And some of you guys even cheat. You open that thing up and take a bite while you go right through the aisles. It's soft. It's good. It's warm. And then you start thinking a little coffee with it. Woo-hoo! The devil was coming up with some really beautiful pictures. You got to be careful what pictures and images you're meditating on. Jesus overcame the image, overcame the suggestion by doing this, saying no. Do you, know why, do you know why some people can't overcome temptation? You take too long to say no. You know when you got to say no? Immediately. There's no other conversation. Do you know one of the major ways the devil comes to you and me? Through conversation. The Bible says, and the devil said. When he caused Eve to fall, the devil or the serpent said. Do you know during this fast, you're going to have to, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fast food, but some of us need to fast some conversations you've been in. The Bible says, do not be, do not be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners or corrupts good habits or corrupts good character or corrupts good morals. So what he's saying is, before you become immoral, before you become a drug addict, before you start making bad decisions, before you get full of division, before you start fighting, before you become negative, usually there's someone that brought that seed through conversation. We need right now not only to fast food, we need to fast some people. Because every time you come together, it's divisive, it's negative, you're complaining, it's just bad news. You're cussing, it's getting dirty. You're laughing at dirty jokes, ha, 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 ha. How funny, man, send me another one. 2021, let's have some fun. The wrong model. No, 2021, let's all reach one. Not 2021, let's have some fun. That's not the motto. See, you're, you're, you're doing a rhyme, but it's the demonic rhyme. You can need to stop repeating the demonic rhyme. 
Right now, you need to cut the gossip, cut the judgmentalism, cut the negative, cut the unforgiveness, cut all those conversations that are just bad. Because as long as you're, in, cut that lustful texting and Facebooking, stop trying to look, look up your ex-boyfriend in high school. It's been 20 years. What if he still looks the same way? Well, do you look the same? Well, no, I don't, but maybe he does. <laughs> and you're married. And then you send him a friend request with a doctored up picture that has those special apps that take 20 years off your life. Wow, she looks so good. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, it's not real, bro. <laughs> that's, a, that's an app. <laughs> said, this is how the devil has conversations with us today. Because it's really easier than ever for the devil to have conversation with us. Because conversations are easily accessible. We are open to a lot of demonic conversations that lead to some major temptation, that lead to some major falls. I was listening to, a, listening to a prophet yesterday, and he said this. He goes, this year, we're talking about churches and leaders. He goes, I want to tell you something. The devil is not impressed with your gifts because he's gifted. The only, do you know what he's impressed with? Your relationship with God, your holiness, your devotion to God. And that's what was being tested in this moment. The anointed one, Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, is getting hit with every single temptation that Adam was hit with, but failed. Adam failed. He, Jesus is getting hit with every single temptation that we've got, we've faced but yet without sin. And the enemy right now is going to be after our loyalty right at the beginning of the year. Don't wait, don't need, you don't have to wait to six months. He goes, let me get them on my track early in the year. Let me give them some justifiable suggestions through conversation. Be careful. Be alert who is speaking into your life in this season. There's people, they don't even know it. They're assigned by the enemy with demonic words to get you off track for you to fall for the bait. Okay. Now Jesus, you know how he overcame temptation? He said what? He said what? First thing, he, he said, no. What did he do? Say what? And for these 21 days, we're going to get a habit of saying no, even to our bodies when they want food. We say no so we can say yes to God. In James 4, 7, it says, submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will what? I right, say it one more time. What's the devil? Those temptations, those addictions, those conversations, those old patterns of living that you're saying, man, I can't continue living this way. Nothing good has come from that pattern of thinking, that pattern of living. Something has to change. That's the devil. And this is what the scripture is saying in James 4, 7. It says, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? Flee. What you say no to continually will eventually go. I'll say one more thing. What you say yes to occasionally will stay. You know what that means? You could say no two times, but he already knows the third time they're going to say yes. So just hang out, devils. 
There's some devils and there's some habits and there's some addictions we've not been able to kick. And this is the reason you're occasionally still saying yes. The devil's not convinced you don't want him. It's getting quiet in here. There's be a lot of demonic stuff going on with these people. <laughs> are we, come on, are we all facing this kind of stuff? All of us. Right? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to me first. There's some things that are just habits that are just bad habits that I have to start saying no to because these habits, either I overcome them or they keep on overcoming me. And nothing is going to go without consistently saying no, 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 no. Do you hear me? No. What? No. And we need to say no like we mean no. Because the way you say no means a lot too. Jesus said no with an exclamation point like, no! Sometimes we say no like this, no? <laughs> one has an exclamation point, one has a question mark, no? <laughs> hey, do you want some drugs? No? Oh, so you want some? No. <laughs> yeah, you do. Come here. You're married. That girl at work starts flirting with you, wearing the perfume that she found out you like. And she starts talking to you. What message are you giving? Well, um, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm kind of married, but we're having problems, though. How's that sound? You're saying no, but your body language is saying yes. Oh, I'm just getting stuck right here. We got, we got to start saying, come on, say no with authority. Say no because the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. He's ready to ruin your life, ruin your future, take over. And I, I want you to get the devil's not playing. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. That little temptation is going to lead to massive problems. No. And the second thing Jesus did to overcome temptation, he spoke the word. What did he do? He said, it is, he goes, it is written. The scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He went to scripture. What did he go to? In order, in order to quote scripture, you got to first store scripture. To quote scripture, you got to what? Store scripture. You can't give out what you didn't put in. So for 21 days, we're not just, uh, I'm not eating. No, we're not just, I'm not eating. We're going to store ourselves. That means we're like the chipmunks. We're going to store some word. We're going to be like those ants that prepare for the winter season. So get some, say this, get some word in you. And if you're going to get word in you, you're going to have to be intentional about it. Come to church, get some word in you. I just bought myself a, a brand new Bible. I watch, I do it online, but I got myself a brand new Bible. I'll tell you why I got this brand new Bible. I went to Barnes and Noble. I got a brand new Bible. The reason I got a brand new Bible, I want to read it. But the other reason I got a brand new Bible, I couldn't read the other one. The print was too small. I was like. <laughs> I'm trying to act like I'm not getting older, but I was like. Like, literally, I had a bad face. That's how I'm reading the word, like. <laughs> if someone's reading the word like that, it's not that they don't like the Bible. They just can't read it. I got a big letter king. I mean, just huge. It's a, not even big. It's giant. Giant print. That's why I got the Bible up here right now. Because people say, how come you don't put the Bible out? My Bible, I can't read. <laughs> All right, so anyways, let's get going. 
So I said, get the word in you. To, see, to speak the word, you're going to have to what? Store the word. In Psalms 119.11, look at this verse. In Psalms 119.11, it says this. I have stored your word in my heart. I have what? How is the word going to get in your heart? You're going to have to store it in there. Meditate on it. Study it. And I'm not saying every day you got to study for eight hours. Don't, don't do like you do with the gym. You sign up for the gym, you start working out like you've been working out, and you're so sore that you never go back. This year, I'm going to the gym. I'm probably going to bring my own gym home. And, you, and then you start working out your first day. You do two, three hours of, a, of the PX90, whatever thing. You can't even breathe after when you're done. And you go, oh, my first day, day number one down. Tomorrow, you're all sore. Not, I can't work out tomorrow, today. And then before you don't do nothing, this is all I'm saying. Be consistent with your time with the Lord. Just be consistent. If it's 15 minutes, be consistent with 15 minutes. It's not an all or nothing. It's doing something every single day to store some word in your life. Because I want you, the devil came to Jesus and I would, I'm going to tell you this, the devil's going to come to you. It's not if he comes, he's coming. The question is, when he comes, are you going to be loaded up with scripture or loaded up with YouTube and Facebook? Or CNN or Fox News, whatever you watch. Because some of us could quote movies. You could quote what the, the latest reports on coronavirus. I don't know how many people died today. That, I mean, that's fine. Keep track of all that. But, but what happens when you are in a battle and then you get coronavirus and now you're fighting for your life, you're fighting for your family, you're fighting for your future. What, what happens when you get laid off? What happens when your heart is broken? What happens when things don't go right? What happens when the major temptation hits you that wants to rip you off of every single thing that you built? What are you going to do? You can't just hope it away. You're going to have to speak the word of God and come against the enemy with truth when he's come to you with lies. So I say, speak the word. See, I know when people are ready by how they talk. If someone's talking and there's no scripture in their mouth, I remember this. I remember this. I was in my last church, I was my pastor had me come in and answer the phones. So I'm answering the phones. And this lady calls. She goes, I want some counseling. And she, because she looked at our, our phone, our, our church up. This is back in the day, in the yellow pages. So she went through this. She found um, the church I was at, Carpenter's house. And she calls. She's never been to our church. But she wants counseling. So I told her, oh, yeah, we, yeah we, we, we'll help you get counsel. As a matter of fact, we could talk right now. My job is just to answer the phones here. I'm one of the pastors. Say, I'd love to talk to you. So this is what I did. She started telling me her problems. And when she started telling me her problems, this is the only way I know how to counsel. I said this. The Bible says, 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 the Bible says. That was a conversation. She got mad. I said, why? Every time I'm giving you a problem, you're quoting me a scripture. I want some real counseling. <laughs> what she wanted was some psychology. She didn't want, I want to say, she didn't want real truth. I was directing her to the root of her problems. She just wanted to put a band-aid on her problems. She wanted to cope. She didn't want to be saved and set free. This is what I'm saying. The only way I can say the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, is because I've done a lot of storing. It doesn't make me any better than nobody else because I got to store it just like you got to store it. 
And if you're not spending any time studying the Bible, you're not going to be ready for the temptations that you're facing because your mama can't fight for you. Your daddy can't fight for you. I can't fight for you. You're going to be in a battle all by yourself just like Jesus was with temptation facing you. And if you don't have the word of God, it's going to overwhelm you. He's just not strong enough. She's not strong enough. It's not that you're not strong enough. This idea, you're not prepared enough. Is that right? So now Jesus says, it's written. The devil leave? No, he didn't leave. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem. To the highest point of the temple. He takes him to a temple. The highest point of the temple is around 200 feet. 200 feet high. See, the devil takes Jesus all the way up there. And said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order. This is so crazy. The devil's now quoting scripture. You know why he's quoting scripture? Because this is what he's doing. He's trying to get Jesus to justify the decision he's a, he wants him to make. He goes, I already know he loves the word. So let me twist the scripture for him. He said, if you are the son of God, jump off from the, for the scripture say, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands. So you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Then Jesus responded, then Jesus responded, say it with me. Then Jesus responded. Let's say it together. Then Jesus responded. The scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord, your God. So Jesus does the second thing. Over and over, the devil brings a suggestion. He captures that suggestion. He overthrows that suggestion. By speaking the word over that idea. If we don't speak the word, the devil's idea ends up being the last idea that's deliberated. So you got you to say, no, nah, devil, I don't care what you suggest. I'm going to have the last word here because my God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You started this thing, but I'm going to finish this thing. Every time you speak, I'm going to immediately say the word of God says. You're in a battle. You know how you mess up? You know how you lose? When you start quoting what the devil said. I just feel like this is a straw that broke the camel's back. It is all over. I think this is the year. I just got a feeling everything's not going to be all right. I'm a failure. No one loves me. Look what I've done. God could never forgive me for the things I've done, the things I've said. Nah, man. I might as well just throw in the towel and just go back to the way I've been living. How can God accept me? See, if you don't have some word to fight against all that nonsense, you will be defeated. But the truth is, it doesn't matter what you've done. The Bible says, if I confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. The Bible says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, old things have passed away and everything becomes new. I'm a new creation in Christ. The Bible. Someone say, fight. And we're ended with this. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kings of the world and their glory. Remember, this is Jesus fasting for 40 days. He is hungry and he's being assaulted by this, this, the devil, not a demon, the devil himself. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. And then Jesus said, get out of here, Satan. Jesus told him, look at this. For the scriptures say, what did he say? 
You must worship the Lord, the Lord your God, and serve him, and serve only him. The devil went away, and the angels came and took care of Jesus. The devil went away. The devil went away. The devil went away. Whatever you're dealing right now, the devil will go away. You can have relief. You can have freedom. You can have deliverance from whatever demon or devil that's been tormenting you, hurting you, or been in your family for generations. There has to be someone that finally says this year, 2021, we are done with the devil. He's no longer going to rule our lives, rule our thoughts, rule our emotions, rule our decisions. I am done in the name of Jesus. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Early 2021, I'm declaring war on the devil that's been doing havoc in my family. Family. And what I'm going to do is store the word in my heart. Put God first. I'm going to resist the devil and he's going to flee. And I'm not going to resist him with my strength. I'm going to resist him with the word. Does that make sense to you? You fight bad thoughts, lies, and deception with truth. Be a scholar of truth. And I'm not just talking quoting scripture. I'm talking, you're quoting stuff you know. And it's not how many, how many scriptures you know. It's that you know some scripture. If you have a if you have right now a sword, it might not be the sharpest one, but you got one. And it could be bigger and it could be sharper as you go. But whatever sword you got, which is the word of God, sharpen that thing, work that thing, and it's enough for every single battle you're in. You're never going to be in a battle that God's going to put you in a position that you're not ready for that. God will never give you more temptation that you can handle, more tests than you can handle. Whatever battle you're in, don't agree with the devil. This is too much. No, you can handle this. You can get through this, and you got a sword. It's time to bring out your sword and start using what God has given you. Is that right? I love you guys. I want you to fight. Because we're not just fighting for you. We're fighting for souls. And people are being lost for eternity. And there's so many things that could capture your mind, capture your heart, capture your conversation. And some of it seems so good. And it seems like a great cause. But be careful that you're not running with a good cause instead of running with a God cause. Because good cause could send you to hell and ruin your whole life and waste it. We were, we were created new in Christ. New creations, masterpieces for good works, for his works that were established before the foundation of the earth. There's someone saying fight. And someone saying this, fight for me. If you don't come and rescue me with the good news, with the word of God, with love, there's no hope for me. And they don't know how to fight. And they have no word. And they have no relationship with God. But the devil's been telling you you're not good enough. You're not prepared enough. You're not smart enough. You're not holy enough. Whatever all that stuff is. He's trying to stop you from taking steps forward. You're a son of God. You're a child of God. If, you face, if you've given your life to Jesus, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And he's in you. And if he's in you, his Holy Spirit's in you. And if his Holy Spirit's in you, he'll start bringing back to remembrance the word that was stored up in you. Even today, there's been some word that's been stored up in you. And the scripture says, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And the devil left. And then the angels came and ministered to him. What he's saying is, you're in a battle, but you're going to win this. Your whole life won't be a battle. There's going to be time where you're going to feel restored, refreshed, 
You're going to be celebrating victories. That's where God's taking you. Wednesday night, we're going to start our fast. Let's get ready for that fast. Pastor Robert, could you please close us out? Awesome. Awesome. What a great word. Let's all stand up if we can at this time. And so this Wednesday, we're going to start our 21-day corporate fast. You're saying, Pastor, man, I've never fasted before. Just start somewhere. Just start somewhere. Skip a meal. Skip two meals. Just start somewhere. Get the ball rolling on Wednesday. But before we leave here today, we want to give an opportunity, um, number one, for prayer. If you're going through something today, the Bible says when two people agree on something, in the name of Jesus, it's done. So maybe if you're having a, maybe health right now, you're sick, maybe you got a bad report from the doctor, the Bible says even to come forward and let the elders pray for you and you will be healed. Maybe it's finances, maybe it's a family problem, a family challenge, maybe husband and wife, maybe you have some challenges there. Maybe you're even thinking about separation, you're thinking about a divorce, and you got all these thoughts hitting you right now. Before you leave, get some prayer. We serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of restoration. He can restore relationships. Maybe it's your business. Your business is struggling. Um, you need some wisdom there. You need some guidance. You need some favor. Um, whatever it is, whatever you're going through, in a moment, we're going to open up the front section here. Our altar workers are here, and we'd love to pray with you, just agree with you to see God move in that situation. But here's the last thing. Before we leave today, and those watching online, you're watching at home right now, you're watching maybe from a, a job, a, work, a workplace, maybe you're driving. This is for you as well. Everybody here in this auditorium, we want to make sure before we leave these doors today, before all of us just walk out these doors, we want to make sure one thing, that you are saved, that you are born again, and you're on your way to heaven. The Bible says our life is like vapor. We're here for one second, we're gone the next. I think last week we did like five funerals. I got another funeral I got to do Tuesday, another one on Wednesday. So many people are passing away. People sick. We have a, one of our members, um, grandparents, he died, he died of COVID. We'll be doing that on Tuesday in Redlands. Um, oh, no, that'll be on Wednesday. Tuesday is one of our young adults. He was 30 years old or so. He passed away. Passed away. It just shows us again that tomorrow is not promised. The next 45 minutes is not promised to you. Then, Pastor, what are you doing? You're trying to scare me. Before I have nothing to do with scare, it's 100% fact. We're all going to die one day. All of us in this room, we're not going to skip death. If Jesus tarries a little longer, now if Jesus came back to rapture, yeah, we'd be gone. But if Jesus tarries a few more years and continues to tarry a little longer, we're all going to pass away. But here's a question. If you stood before God, if you stood before God today, you breathe your last breath, are you right with God? Have you given your life to Jesus have you confessed Jesus as Lord? It's not about a religion. It's not about a church. I'm not saying, hey, come join the way and you're saved. If I said that, man, run as fast as you can outside this building. It's not about a religion. There's nowhere in the Bible that says this. If you are a Baptist, you go straight to heaven. No such thing as that. If you are a Pentecostal, straight to heaven. No such thing as that. If you're a Catholic, you're a Methodist. No such thing as that. What gets us saved is placing our faith in Jesus Christ on what he did on the cross. Not a religion, not a church. So here it goes. If you would like to be forgiven of all of your sins, if you want to make sure if you die today, you would go straight to heaven. If you want to become a Christian, if you want to become a disciple of Jesus, get ready to raise your hands. Don't let nothing hold your hand down. This is you in eternity right now. This is you in eternity right now. This is the biggest decision you'll ever make in your whole life. Not a career, not a spouse. This is the biggest decision we have to make. Am I going to follow Jesus or I'm not going to follow Jesus? Biggest decision you'll ever make in your life. And the consequences are severe. If you say, I accept Jesus, you receive heaven. You receive eternal life. If you say, no, I don't want Jesus, then there's hell that's waiting for you. And it's a real place. The Bible says that 
it, it describes as a second death. You'll be cast at the end of time. You'll be cast into the lake of fire. As soon as we die, that's it. There's no, there's no purgatory. A lot of religions will tell you there's a purgatory where your spirit will roam around for a couple of years. There's no such thing in that in the Bible. As soon as you die, the Bible says to be absent on this body is to be present with the Lord. So here it goes. If you want Jesus, if you want to be forgiven of all your sins, if you want to make sure that you're right with God, I'm going to count to three. And when I, when I say that number three, just raise your hand and say, that's me. I want Jesus. I want to follow God. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to get right with him. When I count to three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. So I want Jesus. I want to give my life to God. I see a hand right there. Keep your hand on me for 10 seconds. I see a hand right there. I see your hand right there, sir. I see you right there. I see you right there. I see one right there. All those that just raised your hands. I want you to come forward, come meet me down here, and I'm going to lead you right now in a prayer to give your life to Jesus. As they come down, church, give them a big round. Yes. Up. 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 Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Yes, come, come. This is your day. This is your day. Yes. We got one, two, we got three, we got four, we got five, we got six. Now, I want us to take 20 seconds. One more thing before we leave. I want you to ask the person you're standing next to. I want you to ask them this. If you were to die today, do you know where you're spending eternity? They said, man, I, I don't know. Say, come on, I'll go down there with you. I'll support you in your walk with Christ. Take 20 seconds. Maybe you brought a family right now, and this is the reason why you brought them. You want to see them get saved. Take 20 seconds. Hey, if you were to die today, where would you go? Take 20 more seconds. Come on down. Yeah, 20 more seconds. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. 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 Yes, anyone else? Anyone else? All right, here we go. Everybody that's up here, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. When you say this prayer, you're going to be saved. You're going to receive Jesus as your Savior. You're going to say, that's it. Now, as soon as you say this prayer, after we're done, we have some people here standing in front of you, beside you. We're going to exchange some info. We're going to pray with you and then get you to your next step. What's your next step? The classes here are called Starting at the Way. So your next step is going to be Starting at the Way, which kick off next Sunday. I'll be teaching Sundays at 9. Pastor Mark will be teaching Tuesdays at 7. This is the only time through the whole year that me and Pastor Mark will really get involved in the classes. So next Sunday, you will start discipleship or the following Tuesday. Yeah, another one. Yeah, give God a round of applause. Another one came up. This is your day. This is your day. All right. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're online right now. Wherever you're at, just bow your head for a second. You're at home. Just bow your head. You're at work right now. Just bow your head for a second. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I repent and I receive forgiveness of all the sins I've committed. Jesus, I place my faith in you. Come into my life. Jesus, I surrender Yes, everybody here in the front, can you raise your hands that are, came up here? Just, just say this, I surrender, Jesus. Can you do that for a second? Yeah. Say, I surrender, Jesus. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Set me free. Deliver me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I am saved today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, you are saved. You are born again.